So I got this 87 Omni that blew a CV joint when I was driving it. I kind of knew it was going to happen. Uh, when I got the thing, the, bo the boot was all messed up. And um, I was like, ah, oh, you know, I should take care of that before it becomes a problem. And, uh, well, I didn't. And uh, it burst on me when I was driving. So let's get it in the shop and see what the problem is. So the first thing to do was to get the car up on some jack stands to see what's going on with the axles. All right, so as you can see here, that axle is just shot. It's just spinning away like a madman in there. Okay, I'd say problem confirmed. Now, it's a little curious that that's turning even though it's in neutral, so the only thing I can think of is that there's just some, since there's nothing on the front end here, there's just a little bit of pressure on the clutch maybe. Maybe it's just out of adjustment, I don't know. Hope I didn't do anything internally to it. Maybe it just has something to do with the fact that both wheels are off the ground right now. I don't know. So the next step was to get the hubs off. And to do that, I, you know, jacked up the car thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. But then I quickly realized after I got the car on the ground that that wasn't such a good idea. Yeah. Because it's a open differential. You turn one wheel uh, counterclockwise and the other one goes clockwise uh, like it's supposed to. So I had to put the car back on the ground in order to actually get the hubs off. Okay, let's try that again now that we've got the hubs loose. Now that we got the hub loose and the uh, wheels and tires off, I was able to get the uh, caliper off so I can get a closer inspection as to what was going on. It might be time to replace these. Next up was to remove the steering knuckle. Now. It probably would have been wise to mark the camber uh, positions here. These these bolts, these two bolts I'm undoing here, their job is to adjust the camber of the wheels in and out. Um, I didn't mark it because I figured I'm just going to get an alignment anyway. And when I put it together, it was pretty rough. So in hindsight, I probably should have just scored a mark or something. Look at that. Man, this axle is so, f there you go. I mean, it just completely separated from the, uh, from the joint, I bet. Yep, well, that certainly makes this job easy. Well, there's something you don't see every day. Screwed that guy. With the hub free and the uh, other end of the broken piece of the axle gone, I was able to slide under the car pretty easily and just pop the rest of the CV joint out of the transaxle. This side don't look so bad. And over here. Here you can see me now separating the knuckle from the ball joint and then removing the entire uh, hub assembly away from the car. You know this thing actually didn't look too bad and neither did the ball joint but I'd order new parts and I figured you know I'm in here already so what the hell. These ball joints threw me for a little loop because I for, I thought for some reason that they would press up, you know, like come up out of the thing, and actually they pressed down, uh, and that really uh, messed me up. I ended up almost breaking my ball joint press, and I probably should have known by not, you know, by how <clears throat> much it was fighting me that I was doing something wrong. Uh, but you'll you'll see more of that in here in a second. Oh, and before I actually broke down and bought a ball joint press, I figured 
that I would maul it with a hammer and see if I would have any luck, but uh, of course I wasn't able to get it out. Okay, safety uh, tip here. Uh, these are loaded springs that I'm messing with right here, and unfortunately, th this was my first time messing with front end stuff, and I, I, I understand it now, but you'll see me here doing the wrong thing. I, what I should have been doing was loosening up these two smaller side bolts, and then the entire strut assembly would have come out of the vehicle as one piece. But uh, what you'll see me here doing is I'm actually releasing the the strut tower mount. And then the whole thing is about to explode under my legs. Um, thankfully, you know, nobody got hurt, nothing. I, I didn't get hurt or anything. But you'll see here when it goes off just how much power is, is compressed in the springs. All right, she was loaded. All right, this is the kind of hear about it just happened luckily I didn't get too hurt it kind of hurt my feet a little bit but this thing just exploded when I opened it up now that the excitement's worn off I'll take out the strut tower mounts with these I think they were 13 millimeter nuts okay this should still be on the shock tower that was the mistake I made so that you know the, the, the top would be coming through here and it would still be together so um, it probably could have been a lot worse than it was I'll make sure I get the other side right next thing I had to do is get the tie rod end off now normally you would use a pickle fork or something like that to separate these two and you would also probably do it while it's still attached to the ball joint because then you have something anchored to but I did it wrong on the passenger side and then I got it right on this side but uh, I had a hell of a time getting it off because I don't have air tools right now uh, while I'm building my new garage and you know I have like battery powered tools and nothing but big dumb hammers so uh, th this was a real pain to get this apart but I eventually got it after applying some heat and brute force. Alright I kinda lied I guess I do have air tools I've got this like little pancake compressor and so I figured well what the heck let me let me try my air chisel on that using the the little compressor but that was pretty much just a waste of time. I eventually got it. Unfortunately, it, it didn't happen on camera. I guess I must have stopped it or something, and then it popped off. So, uh, you know, when you get in these situations, uh, you, you just got to kind of go for it. You just got to keep working it, uh, heat and hammer and, you know, progressively larger tools. I mean, the worst thing you could do is break it. You know, and this is a an 87 Omni, so I really didn't have much to lose. So here you can see I'm taking the brake caliper and just, you know, bungeeing it out of the way. It's a sealed system, and the brakes were working fine. You know, I mean, in terms of the caliper was working. So I didn't want to, like, bust a hose and have to bleed the system and fix all that. So we'll just tuck this out of the way so we can get to the strut tower next. On this side, I'm going to demonstrate the proper way to remove the strut tower. Uh, and that would be by loosening these two 13mm bolts and just dropping the entire assembly out of the vehicle as one piece. That's probably how that was supposed to go. Now, I knew better than to mess with this hub and try to get it out of the knuckle, but I had to give it the old college try by hitting it with a hammer. Um, but after just a few minutes of that, I quickly realized that I was messing up the the knuckle itself and that what I really needed was a press. Unfortunately we're gonna fast forward a little bit. I don't have any footage of me pressing these hubs into the knuckle. You know it goes exactly like you think it would. You take the old one out, you push the new one in. Here you can see I've got the new hub in and so the next step is to bolt it in and make sure that the gaskets align correctly and then uh, install the seals. Torque specs on this were actually pretty low. It was only 20 foot pounds. So here we're just going to use the torque wrench to get these snug. It was a nice day out and I had my smoker going. It was nothing like taking a break from working on cars and smoking some meat or fish. Here I, here I got a nice smoked salmon. We'll keep an eye on that as we work.
All right, this is the rear side of the hub and the knuckle. So the CV joint slides into there and, you know, it can slide in and out uh, depending on, you know, what position the suspension's in. The machined part of the axle rests against a seal that I'm about to press in here right now. All right, I feel uh, pretty good about that. And for some reason, the bearing says fag on it. After really messing with the other side and realizing, like I said earlier, that this presses down and instead of up, uh, I, I had a little bit more luck on this side. If you ever use one of these ball joint press tools, it's it, a matter of finding the right set of spacers and caps and then taking the clamp and just clamp in and pushing the thing out. It takes a few tries to get it right and you just gotta mess with all the pieces but uh, eventually it'll make sense and the thing will just come right out. Putting the new ball joint in is just the reverse of taking the old one out. Uh, you just have to get the right combination of the pieces, uh, get the clamp on it, and then press it back on. And this one actually had a C-clip on it to hold it in place, which makes sense. The other one that I took off didn't have that, which was kind of strange. Um, but it certainly wasn't going anywhere, as you saw by the other side. Time to check on the fish. All right, this was probably my least favorite part of the job. I must have messed with these springs for hours. Combinations of compressing the springs, getting the struts in there, and then of course, you know, I didn't do a good job of marking how I took it apart and what what piece goes on where. You know, there's like a cap, and then there's like a, a you know, washers and and all this stuff and. So I probably should have done a better job figuring it out. And of course, because it's such an old car it's, and, and nobody really likes them, there's just not a lot of information about how to put them back together. And one mistake I made after I got these all put together was that I, since I didn't have any documentation or pictures about how it went together, I was kind of using clues that I had, uh, you know, on the mounts, like where the rust was and where the rust wasn't, trying to figure out, okay, where does this stuff line up? When I went to go put the strut assembly back into the vehicle, I wasn't able to turn the wheel at all, only to realize that I had put the mount on backwards and the spring was all out of alignment. So I had to take them both apart again and then realign the top part and then put it all back together. And I probably wore out the spring compressor. There's little metal shavings all over the place. So, um... You know, I don't know what kind of advice I have on this other than just it's trial and error. And, and, you know, it's probably just like anything. You do it enough times, you know exactly what to do. This turning thing stuck against the spring. <sighs> At one point, I was desperate. I needed a third hand, so I asked my wife to come out and <laughs> help me push down and so I can attach the bolt on the top of this thing. Look, only three minutes in here, and look, I'm covered in dirt. Oh. <laughs> All right, that's enough of these spring compressor Olympics. I, I don't need to see any more of that, so... Here I am just uh, getting ready to put it all back together. I figured while I have access, now would be a good time to grease the ball joints. This next step may or may not have been necessary. Uh, what you're looking at here are the 
seals on the transaxle. There's one on each side, and it's where the CV joint connects. Uh, you know, these weren't leaking at all. I just figured, well, we're in here, and, you know, they look like the original seals, probably from 30-something years old. You know, how hard would it be to replace them? Well, you know, like as everything, it ended up taking me a ton of time. You can see me struggling, trying to get the seal off, and I, I eventually break the tool that I'm using and, you know, have to come up with other means of getting it out. Uh, if I remember correctly, the, the passenger side one popped out a little bit easier, and then the driver side one, I had a real time getting it out because, um, you know, I'd broken my tool and I was trying to use slide hammers and they weren't working, and then it occurred to me that I could just take this entire assembly off. You'll see it's got like something like six or eight bolts that hold it on. And I had already drained the entire system anyway, so I unbolted it, got it up on the bench, and was able to use a brass punch to get the seal out. Bingo! And then, of course, since I already had it on the bench, I figured now would be a good time to put the new seal in. And then, you know, putting it back on was just a matter of getting some RTV sealant and putting, spreading that around and then getting back up in there making sure everything was nice and clean and then uh you know just bolting it back up and torquing it to spec now i didn't have any torque specs on this um so i just went with 50 foot pounds that's i don't know if that's right but uh you know that's what i went with it seems to be holding okay so this is a lot a lot of sequence while i was waiting for the rtv sealant to set up i, I figured now would be a good time to take a look at these brake calipers and get them ready uh, so that when I start assembling everything, I don't have to stop what I'm doing to mess with them. Uh, you know, I thought they were in pretty good shape. You know, a further inspection, I probably should have replaced them since I was in there doing everything. You know, as I was resetting the pistons on this thing, it was pushing brown fluid back up into the reservoir, so that probably means they're, you know, the fluid's burnt or rusty. And I also had a heck of a time with this, uh, with this sliding pin here. Uh, they're supposed to have a bushing on them that the thing rides on and you know it was shot and for 20 bucks or whatever $30 you could get new calipers and they would come with the pin but of course I didn't have them and you know I'm not gonna order just the pin because that's probably as much as the caliper so I figured let me try to make some kind of a bushing you can use cable shrink material and you know put it over the bolt and heat it on and, and put it in layers until you get it the right thickness. Now, obviously, I know that that's probably not the uh, preferred method of doing this. There, you would supposedly, you know, I'm sure that the chemicals will wear it down and, uh, you know, eventually it'll have to be replaced. But I plan on kind of going back in and getting new calipers anyway and kind of bleeding the system and doing all that maybe in a couple months. So I didn't really care. I just kind of wanted to get down the road. And it seemed to work, uh, you know, once I got it all put back together, it, it, it drove fine and I was able to stop. So, um, you know, you do what you can to get through. With all the lower end components now in, it was time to put the shock towers back in, the, the struts and the spring assembly. After messing with them, putting them together, taking them apart, I think I finally got it right. I was able to mount the shock towers back to the to stock position and then they would turn left and right uh, freely which meant I should be able to steer correctly so once I had them in position it was a matter of uh, just tightening the bolts up on the top of my hand um, wait until I got the car on the ground before I would actually torque them down and then uh, you know attaching the knuckle on the bottom now the trick here is at least on this car was to release the sway bar I had a heck of a time trying to get the knuckle to mount into the mount on the shock tower. And I was pushing down on the control arm and it just wouldn't go. And after I got underneath that, I realized that there's a sway bar that went across uh, and I'm fighting that the entire time. So once I loosened the four mounting bolts on that and so it, it wasn't pressing on itself, then I was able to drop the control arms down and then, you know, work it in there. With the strut connected, next I put the tie rod end on. I just, I just ran this jam nut back down a little bit, you know, cleaned up the threads, lubed it up, and then put
put the tie rod end on. I wanted everything to be nice and loose because I was going to bring it down for an alignment right after putting it all together, and I just didn't want them to have to fight with anything. Now with the rotor on, we can thread on the axle bolt, just enough to keep it from falling out, and put the brake caliber on. You can't tighten this nut until the car's on the ground, because if you turn the axle, uh, you know, the other one's going to turn in the opposite direction, just the nature of the way the differential works. With all the front end components now on, I wanted to fill the manual transmission back up with oil. Funny enough, this transmission actually just takes 5W30, just regular straight up motor oil. I, I didn't believe it at first, I had to, you know, check, make sure, but it even said it in the owner's manual, so there you go. And I also had a hard time finding this drain plug. Uh, it seemed obvious once I found it, but I looked all over the engine, looked for something that was threaded, and it ended up just being this rubber plug. On the driver's side of the engine, it's just under this plastic cover, forward of the transaxle. So there you go. With the front end back together, I figured it was time to put the tires on and try to set it on the ground. You know, despite the springs and everything, this installation went pretty smoothly except up to this part right here where I put the tire on and and I realized that one of the studs from the hub assembly is messed up. And of course I don't have a metric thread chaser, so after messing around with this and trying to file it down and playing around, I just uh, decided to go with three lugs instead until I can get the proper tool to fix it. It held up for a couple days, which is all I really needed. It to do. Uh, I certainly would not recommend driving around on three lugs permanently. I also unfortunately realized that once I had the tires on and had it on the ground, I, when I went to go tighten the spindle nut, I got that in place, but then I wasn't able to put the cotter pin on because of the design of the hubcap. So then of course I had to jack the car up again, take the tires off to set the cotter pin, then put the wheels back on, and then I can put it down on the ground. With the weight of the vehicle now on the shock towers, I was able to torque everything down. These outer mounting bolts I set to 20, and the shock tower center bolt there I set to 55. It was a little bit tricky because I couldn't figure out how to turn the nut and hold the thing from spinning at the same time, but then I realized that you don't torque the nut, you torque the top part. So, it worked out. Alright, as one of my good friends says, let her rip, tater chip.
Okay, what more could you ask for? Forward and reverse? I mean, check it out. I'm actually going backwards here. And I'm going to put it back and I'm going to drive back into the driveway. I, I mean, you know, the Omni is not a... Unless it was the GLH, it wasn't a luxury sports car, fast or anything like that. I just wanted to get me to work. You know, I know a lot of people that are just obsessed with going the fastest and one-upping you with whatever, you know, doing the longest burnout or, or, you know, lifting the most weight with their vehicle or going the fast. I mean, whatever. You know, for me, I'm just happy taking an old car like this that was going to go to the junkyard and bringing it back to life and driving it to work every day and getting thumbs up on the road of people doing a double take and being like, is that an Omni? All right, we fixed it. She rides again. So I gotta still get an alignment and I have to figure out what's going on with the um, stud over here. Let me show you. I only have, I only have three lugs on here because that stud screwed up. And of course I don't have a metric uh, thread chaser. So I gotta get that figured out. Uh, like I said, just to get an alignment and I think we're good. She stops, she goes. Still have all the other problems I had with it, but there it is.